everyone. Thank you for being here with us. Welcome to the Big Dish Dialogue. I am Chinaza Arundhachiko, and I am an NRL Food Institute scholar. I'm also a KG student in the Department of Food Sciences. Mm -hmm. I'm from Nigeria, just like I said, and I'm from the eastern part of Nigeria, and I'm Basque. And my colleague will go and introduce Hello, everyone. My name is Tsumishi Petsihibo. I am an Ariel Food Institute scholar and a master's student in the Department of Animal Biosciences. I'm also a Nigerian and I'm from the southern part of Nigeria, a mix of Edo and Yoruba. So thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Okay, thank you, Faith. So we are excited to have our special guests, the Twin and Kitchen, Taiwo and Kenide Daramola from Twins and Kitchen. Um, for those who are tuned in online, we we are here in the we are here in the Anita Anita Stewart Memorial Food Lab at the University of Guelph. And just like just to mention, uh, we all are from Nigeria. And since we are going to be knowing more about Nigerian culture and dish today, I would like to mention that. I'm from the Igbo tribe, and he's from the Edo tribe, and they are from the Yoruba. They will still introduce themselves properly. And we all don't speak the same language. That's the interesting thing about Nigeria. Like, seriously, we only speak English. I can say, my Afambu, Afambu is my, my name. My name is in my language. If my language is Igbo language, but faith will never understand me until I say, oh, faith, my name is Chinanza. <laughs> so, so that's it in Nigeria. That's how it is in Nigeria, and they are from the Yoruba. So we have three major tribes in Nigeria, but we have more than 250 tribes in Nigeria. That's exciting to know, right? Okay, so one of the things that bring us all together, apart from the language that we speak in common English, it's Java fries, and that's what we are going to learn from, to, we'll learn about today and more about our culture. So before we go on, please. yeah. So we'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that today's event is taking place on the ancestral lands of the Atawandran people and treaty lands and the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. And um, today, these gathering places are home to many First Nations, Metis, and Inuit people, and we are offering our respect to them as our indigenous neighbors. I would also like to put it out here that. Jollof rice is a West African dish that originated from the Senegambian region of Africa. And what in Nigeria it is a food, I mean, West Africa at large, it is a food that really connects everybody. It unites us because we have different tribes, different ethnic groups, different religions, but jollof rice is one thing that like everybody eats. And that's why it's the most famous um, African food outside the continent. So. Look forward to knowing more about Jollof rice today and tasting it. Yes, <laughs> thank you very much, Faith. So, as we mentioned, today's event it's all about Nigerian jollof rice. There are other jollof rice, just like you said, but today it's Nigerian jollof rice. So, let's focus more on Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we have the twin sisters because you must have thought twin in kitchen. Yeah, they are twins. <laughs> so, uh, it's uh, Taiwan Kenya. They joining us today. Taiwan and Kanye, they, just a, br a brief introduction. They started Twins and Kitchen since the um, spring of April 2016. And they are a based um, company with a vision to introduce good quality food, Nigerian food in Guelph, in Ontario, and in Canada uh, at large. So um, anytime I say good quality Nigerian food, it makes me smile because I know what it means to me. Mm -hmm. So please, Taiwan Kainde, can you tell us more about your background and tell us more about Twins and Kitchen? Yes. Uh, so we started in 2016. So the reason why we actually started is uh, at that time, both of us were actually unemployed. Uh, we just got uh, tax refunds. And my sister has always had a passion for cooking and I, I always had a passion for business. So we both decided to actually start cooking um, together. The good thing about cooking is that you don't need like a large sum of money to start. Um, so we, whatever points that we had during that period, we just started. And I remember our first day when we opened, we're, we're living in Mississauga back then. And when we first opened, we got so many orders mm. that we couldn't even keep up. Like we finished cooking like 1 a.m. that day, like we were exhausted. So that let us know that there was a need um, for us in the, in the markets, and since then we've like, been growing. We moved to Guelph, and we when we moved here, we, we're scared. Like, okay, we built a business in GTA. How are we going to survive here in Guelph? 
but we just keep expanding and expanding. So, you want to add anything? Um, yes, yeah, so just to speak to what you said. So, my name is Kendi. Um, if you didn't hear that earlier, um, so we started, we started because then we realized there was a need for Nigerian restaurants when we were in Mississauga at the time uh, in 2016, where I can just call up and say, okay, I need jollof rice and fried meat. Then, then we didn't have that opportunity. Now there are tons of opportunities down there right now, but it's it's always a nice thing to be able to explore and show our culture and anybody can walk in and actually order a plate of jollof rice and different dishes that we also offer. So I'm happy that we're on the show today. So thanks for the invite and actually calling us to be here today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think it's time to start cooking. Okay. Yeah, I think it's time. So uh, while you're cooking, we'll be asking you some questions okay. as we go on. Um, so I'll just walk us through the ingredients. We have um, we have oil, any kind of neutral oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, any oil you use, avocado oil. Um, usually you need an oil that has like a high sensitive point versus something that's like a bit further than the oil. Some diced onions, um, some tomato paste, thyme, dry thyme, fresh thyme, some curry powder, salt, which is the master salt, excuse me. Um, and this is a bouillon broth or stuff powder, chicken stuff. And this is actually a chicken broth. Some uh, boiled long grain rice. I know there, there's a huge debate about the rice used for the rice, but well, Nigeria we use the boiled long grain rice, some dried bay leaves. Um, so for uh, the tomato base, uh, so we usually use a uh, scotch bonnet, red shepherd peppers, some onions, some tomatoes, and you have to get cooking now. So the first thing we're going to do is blend our base which is a mix of peppers, onions, some scotch bonnet, and some tomatoes. Get that in the blender. This is a multi-task square. Yeah? So I think we have a pot on. We can get our oil started. So we can get the oil in pots. And well, that's heating up. So uh, jollof rice is a, uh, I always say it's a, uh, it's it's a pot of love. It's a lot of love. <laughs> it's a lot of, it's a long process. But the good thing is you can always blend, prep this ahead of time in the big batch and put it in the freezer or in the fridge. And during the week you can still jollof rice. <laughs> We're going to get this into a smooth puree. That's good. Um, so now that we have that in, I think our oil should be hot. Anytime you put oil on fire, you want to get that season. So Sizzle. We want to saute the onions a little bit. Okay. So, um, the ingredients, did you get them from here in Canada or yes. you them so from everything can be stuffed in your local grocery store? So from the neutral oil, your tomato paste, to so all the spices they need and of gotten in your local grocery store. So are they affordable? Yes, it's, uh, it's, I'm sure the majority of people kind of have all yeah. these ingredients that we're speaking okay. at home right now. But just to do like, you know, the local price. 
Or some people don't know. Okay. So we get that sizzle in there. We're gonna add our, our aromatics. So dry thyme, we use fresh thyme. This is up for the bit, but we use dry thyme. But you can use fresh thyme and get the first it first brings out the room. Then one thing you have to do because of the, this is like a tomato concentrate, kind of have to fry it and try to fry it on low heat. So you have to fry out the sourness out of this so that you don't get that slack. The tomato, tomatoes are very acidic, so you can get that slack to go fry it out. So the rule of thumb I usually use when cooking is I usually allow it looks like a small pebble. I mean you fry the tomato paste, or you can also taste. There's also the option of tasting it. And this stuff, this stuff doesn't happen. You're good to go to the remaining minutes. So let's get that started. Let's get that fried up. So um being in Nigeria, you know there's the regular jollof and we have the party jollof. Yeah. Can you explain to us the difference between the regular jollof and the party jollof? Um, so before traditional look um, the traditional commercial bonnets, um the big bonus is that we used, we used to cook it on firewood. So the firewood used to have its own different flavor to jollof rice. Um, but now a lot of people use the traditional wood. It's just the the smoke point, that smokiness, that's the main difference between like you cooking a jollof, a pot of jollof rice in your house and this is like a commercially made jollof rice. Mm -hmm. So, but now everybody kind of has a way of getting that smokiness without without that traditional firewood, mm -hmm. firewood cooking. Yeah. But to me, I think I prefer the firewood jollof rice. It gives it this. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. It, it gives the uh, I'm not gonna lie, it gives the, the aroma. Uh, aroma that flavor that we used to. Uh, so I think we're almost there with the paste. So as I said, it should look like small pebbles, like small pebbles of tomato paste. Or you can taste so as well. So, so the next aromatic I'll put is the curry powder. Um I didn't put it earlier on because I didn't want it to burn. So now you should get all your neighbors out. <laughs> you know, like was she cooking? Was he cooking? <laughs> and just to add to that, like when you have a party in Nigeria and you have like hundred friends, you don't just plan for hundred people. Yeah. The general fries will make you get like two hundred people or, or, or one fifty. Yeah, so. Everybody kind of takes. You can smell that curry powder. That that scent. Yes. So now we get like our blended mixed peppers, like tomatoes, all that fresh freshness. Okay. Don't want anything to waste. This is jello fry, so we get some of that water and mix up that blender. We're not wasting any ingredients here. This is jello fries, every tomato. All our rice grains was coated with this food. So now we're going to let this simmer. Let this simmer. Then, at that time, we're going to wash our rice. We wash our rice because we want to get out a lot of the starch that can kind of hinder the beautiful grains when the rice separates. So usually we wash out, wash out some of the starch with this. When I started, I said there's a huge debate in terms of what kind of rice to use between like long, the parboiled long grain rice, the long grain, extra long grain rice, or the scented rice, the jasmine rice, or, or the scented rices, or the, the originality of it actually use a short grain rice. But in Nigeria, we prefer the parboiled rice. But some people also use basmati rice. So depending on what rice you have available. However, 
careful in terms of like the cooking instructions and also the sauce as well. But now it's time for us to wash out the rice. How many times do you have to wash it? Um, the rule of thumb I use probably like five times so that to get as much starch out. Um, but you can wash it as long as like when you see the water is not as cloudy as much. Um, so it's with cold water or warm um, water? I'll use lukewarm. You can okay. use cold water, whatever is ready at the use. But I usually use lukewarm water. Some people parboil the rice, even as this parboiled rice. Um, so it depends on your personal preference and how you actually cook rice normally. Get this washed as much as possible. Right here, I'm using a coranda. I just want to get this ready for my stuff. So I think my rice is at a good point. So I'm going to just lift that. So. Another thing to watch out for is the splatter. Plus it's tomatoes and oil, it's usually a lot of splatter. And I don't want you burning yourself and saying there was one lady that taught me how to make jollof rice and you <laughs> <laughs> can I think I'm always afraid of this part. <laughs> oh no, I don't want to. <laughs> so there's a lot of splatter. Um, so we're going to thin out the sauce with some chicken broth. Allow that to come to the water. The chicken broth, do you want to talk about how so to make that? So the chicken broth, um, so this is like a homemade chicken broth. So with all your aromatics, onions, ginger, garlic, some fresh thyme, some ginger, um, all that salt. Of course, that's the master flavor. Uh, and, and any, like, you can use, like, parsley, Whatever spice or herb or aromatics you usually use in your in your dish, you can use that to as well to make your broth, your homemade broth. It can be veggie broth, it can be chicken broth, it can be beef broth, it can be fish broth too as well. So the original one was made with fish broth. So the Senegal's usually the edge of rice is, is usually made with a fish broth. But in Nigeria, we either do chicken or meat, or, meat. Or, or chicken or beef, I mean. Um, so can you adjust the recipe for people with uh, maybe dietary restrictions because yes. you're using chicken and some people are maybe vegans or yes you can do this right. vegan um, you can make this vegan too as well you can make it you can make it to your palate and your taste so whether it's you want it spicier or less spicy or no pepper at all you can eliminate the scotch bonnet um, you can always um, increase the scotch bonnet if you want more flavor, if you want more heat. You can um, remove the chicken broth, put in a veggie, veggie, veggie broth. You can use, instead of the stock powder, you can eliminate that and use something that's more friendly for a vegan too as well, so, um, or a vegetarian. So you can, you can adjust it, you can use little oil, you can use butter instead of um, a neutral oil, but just be careful about the butter part because butter doesn't have a high smoking point, so that's something to be careful about when you, because this is a, as I said, it's a label of love in terms of making the sauce. Mm -hmm. I will compare this to when, when you're making like the Sunday sauce for the Italians. So it takes time, it takes a long process. So it's not like I'm making jollof and I want it in 30 minutes, like, you know, all those cooking shows where you have under 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> this is not one of it. This takes a long time and a lot of, a lot of love in the pots as well. So while while we're going through that, uh, we can add our master season, some salt, and some stock powder. How would you know how much salt and maggie to add? Um, so you can go by the recipe or taste. I think every good chef tastes. Taste is key in cooking. Uh, no matter how many times you make a dish, sometimes the salt might taste different. <laughs> it might be more and it might be more salty. So taste is usually using your palate. 
So if you taste the dish, and local way of tasting in Nigeria is use your hand. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people are shocked by that. But use your hand and taste. And I love that so well. <laughs> That's the Nigerian way. <laughs> and everything tastes perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so add everything more to that. Everything tastes perfect. So we just allow that come to a boil. So um, how did you learn how to cook? Did you did you need a professional license to cook oh. in Canada? Um. Technically not, but you have to get your food safety license. Mm -hmm. um, that's important to be able to cook food like on nutrition. Of course, as a home cook, you don't require that. Just to know like the right temperatures to keep food at. It's a good rule of thumb to get that class. It's readily available for uh, um, chefs, but you don't have to be professionally trained to as well. Being professionally trained helps. Anything going to school to professional training for anything helps. However, you don't have to. You can be a home cook and also be working as a kitchen cook to as well. So you don't so need how any did you um, In terms of how I learned, uh, I think I learned out of desperation. When we first moved to Canada, like my mom used to do all the cooking, but now I'm like in Canada, my mom is not here. <laughs> I'm here alone. And I'm like, because we're in school, and in the school they provided us with meals, but I'm like, I need to love fries, I need fried rice, I need, I need traditional food. So I just said, I got a rice cooker. I started cooking from a rice cooker and I maneuvered that rice cooker to cook all sorts of things. So I now said, make me actually have a passion. And I always knew I had a, um, a good palate. So if you serve me a dish, I can kind of tell you, okay, you put this, there's cinnamon here, there's nutmeg in there, there's like the spice structure of the meal. I, I had that passion for it. And also I was watch, watching Food Network. I've been watching Food Network. Since right. really, so <laughs> really? so I've always liked cooking and everybody's always like at home so like don't aren't you tired? You cook for a living and now you come back and watch cooking shows because the thing about watching cooking shows is that I get another tip from another cook. I'm like, okay, maybe I should start doing this this way. It broadens your horizon in terms of cooking. And nobody's an island in terms of the cooking, like the cooking principles. Of course, they are the mere basics, but seeing how someone does the cooker makes your life easier. So I've learned a lot of recipes and I cook lots of dishes solely because of that. Because I'm Nigerian, but I can cook any dish across the world oh. too as well. So that... that that helps me by watching all the shows and seeing people actually show us their culture. And shows like this definitely help yeah. Yeah. in terms of how to cook other other dishes from different countries. So that means you don't get tired of cooking jollof rice, like I don't get tired of cooking jollof rice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just I'm sure my family members are tired of it. <laughs> I don't get tired of cooking jollof rice. Um, it's just the uh, the process, the love that it takes, the the expression of people's faces when they're eating the food. I think that's my favorite part of cooking too as well. Like when I'm like, oh, I didn't know it was this delicious. Oh, this is so nice. That always gives me the even when I'm tired and gives me that zeal to go back into the kitchen and huh. start cooking. So that was, that's what keeps me going. Really. Oh, great! That's awesome. So I think this is. Alrighty, so well, so we're gonna bring our wash trice, and I left it here to drain any excess water. So the thing about the love rice, you can either get soggy rice or get rice that the grains fall apart. The the art is in the liquid, so it's better to have less liquid and add more as you go. Let's just have too much liquid and there's literally nothing you can do um, when when you have that. You can always adjust the season. So now So you just pour it the rice and stir it. And stir, stir it. yes. And the last aromatic I'm going to add is the dry beans. So we'll just get that in there. Stir one more time. And jollof rice is not the dish that I'll put it on fire and go and do it. You come upstairs or wherever your house, your kitchen is, and you come up to a burnt pot. <laughs> How to make sure you're somewhere close by to stir, to bring the sauce that settles on top of the rice all the way back to the bottom and just redistribute the heat as you go. Usually, um, 
you can put a foil, some people use plastic bags, but I would rather use a parchment paper for mine, um, and you can like seal the steam, because you don't need high heat for jollof rice, it's a labor of love, you're allowed to cook on low heat, oh. uh, so that every grain of rice is coated with that, tomato, that sweet, delicious fried tomato sauce that you already have in here, and every grain is delicious and tasty. I really love it when you say it's a level of love. It's a level of love. <laughs> I remember one day I was cooking, I was trying to make it, I don't know how to make it very well. So I, I went to get something in the room and I forgot, I started answering a call and then when I came back, my food was burnt. And my, my classmates, my friends were waiting for the food. So um, when it was burnt, they said, oh, Chinaza, your food is burnt. I'm like, oh yeah, you need the smoky flavor. <laughs> oh my God. So it's funny because one of my friends who is from Bhutan went home and cooked jollof and tried to cook it and she told me sorry oh Naza I left it to go on and now it says I said yeah girl you're doing well <laughs> but that was me covering my mistress <laughs> so speaking of like parts of jollof like personally it tastes differently, like the top part tastes differently from like the lower portion of, <laughs> of the pot. So like for you, what's your favorite part of it? Is it the top layer or like that down, well seasoned, um, perfect part? Mine is like top and middle. Okay. I'm a top and middle guy. I know there are a lot of people that crave like that bottom part of jello. Like right. me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. I'm like the top and middle girl. I want my rice like, perfectly cooked. I don't want no <laughs> I don't want to go back, but some people enjoy that part because, of course, all the seasoning is yeah. at the bottom part. Yeah. And it's That's more sure. concentrated at the bottom, but I'm the top and middle. And then what's your what's your preference? Middle. Middle too. Yeah, it's all burnt and all the juice is already in. Because I find sometimes the top is just too moist. Okay. So, like, the middle is a bit dry, so I prefer that. Okay. Yeah. I guess, see, we're all diverse, all Nigerians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <so> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Actually, jello fries makes us happy, very happy. Yeah. <laughs> like, you've seen me smiling since I came to this room. The only reason, I mean, I love the fact that we're celebrating this, but jello fries after this event, it's also one reason why I'm smiling. <laughs> yeah. So as everybody can smell, you can smell that spice, that seasoning, it's all in the air, and I'm going to just allow that cook. Try not to peep too much so that you don't allow the heat to escape yeah. and now it has to build the heat back up. So maybe from time like five, ten minutes, give your stir. So you bring the sauce to the bottom and edit that sauce on top so that all the grains of rice is cooked with even more. Okay, we have... Can I say something? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you can. In my family, we have a tradition. Whoever gets the baby has to do the dishes. Do <laughs> so you have any traditions of the, the baby? Or do you take it out before you serve it? Um, so, uh, you can take it out. Some people serve it with it. Um, and you can take it out because bay leaf has like a very strong earthy flavor. If you bite into it, it's not pleasant, but it seasons your food perfectly. Um, but it depends. Usually, sometimes someone gets the bay leaf. Some people put the bay leaf as an extra garnish, um, but you can take it out after the feature. But there's no tradition in terms of like mm -hmm. that would be actually cool. I know, as a push, I should start that. I'm going to start that. I'm going to start that. I think we have another question. Yeah, I'm talking about the nuance of the dish. So um, you're all talking about different levels of the dish, and, and in a lot of recipes you serve the end and it was all one cohesive whole. You're talking about different levels to it. So at what point in time do you stop stirring it and let it so that it creates this kind of hyperposing within the pot? So it's asking that at what point in time do you stop stirring and allow it to create a microcosm in the pot? Because we're talking about the levels before. So Yeah, so um, usually when the um, the rice has absorbed all the moisture in the pot, yeah, then you can stop stirring. Or and just get towards the end of the cook, right? So then you we will still put in some garnish. Um, you can put in like onions as garnish um, towards the end and use it there. And you also, traditionally, we put in like a, like a butter or margarine or anything you want, like an extra, just to give it that shine towards the end of cook. But after after the rice has absorbed all the liquid, you can stop stirring then. Yeah. 
question. You were speaking earlier about how you can use any type of oil to cook it. I'm wondering if you traditionally use a specific type. So, like in Italy, they use a lot of olive oil. In Spain, they may use lard. In Nigeria, is there like a main oil that in, is present in a lot of recipes? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, main, the two kinds of main kinds of oil we usually use, not necessarily just for jollof rice, is a more neutral oil, whether vegetable or canola, or, or, or palm oil. So palm oil is made from the palm kernel, from palm kernel, and it's boiled, processed to get the palm oil out of it. Um, but because the palm oil has a, um, a low smoking point to as well, it doesn't have a high smoking point as a neutral oil. So usually we use like the more neutral oils, like vegetable kind of oils. So those oils are the kind of oils that we use. We don't really use olive oil. Some people are still switching to olive oil because of all conscious reasons. However, um, the oil that is used for party jollof, the famous party jollof, is usually a neutral oil. Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask that. Um, well, I'm also from Nigeria, and a lot of people say, oh, if you add more onions, that you really get that flavor. Or you add more bell peppers or something like that. What's, in your opinion, what do you think about that? Or how do you, so you measure and decide and determine what you want to be? So we garnish it towards the end of the jello. The onions makes a huge difference at the end of cook. Right, because now you're putting in a new uh, the, the, the uh, onions naturally sweet, right? So it's just bringing the dish together, right? So how people might garnish with parsley, coriander at the end of cook, and it brings the dish together. That's basically what onions does to jollof rice. It just brings the dish together at the end. You can choose to eliminate it and not put it in. So people actually put fresh tomatoes in to as well at the end of cook, um, just to bring the dish together. Remember, it's been on this flavor of love or this process throughout. Sometimes the flavor might have been missing, some flavors might be missing during that building process. The onions kind of refreshes that much, right? It brings us back to base. Because when I started, I started with onions. Basically, when I finish, I finish with onions as well. So I allow, as, as steaming, I allow it to finish. And it releases that flavor mm. towards the end of cook. When you taste the jollof rice, you know, you kind of know that, okay, yeah, this is part of jollof. So usually when they are putting the big commercial pots, they kind of do that to just bring the dish back together. Hope that answers your question. Yeah. So, but you can use, in terms of peppers and tomatoes, you can use all tomatoes, you'll be fine. Um, it's just depending on the color. So if you use less red pep peppers, you can use more of the tomato paste um, to give you that color. Because the distinct difference of jollof rice from any other rice is that red color. You want that red color, that vibrant red um, color, and that's what the paste and the pepper is for Amazing. And to your time before you have to do more surveying. I think I, I, did, I did a little bit. Of it. <laughs> so we have two questions from online. So I'll start with the first one, and it's my little off topic. Well, going back to what you were saying, you talked about how much you love um, the Food Network. And learning that way. And so our question from online is wondering what are some of your favorite shows or chefs and where do you get inspiration from? Um favorite chef. Uh, I won't say favorite chef. I have a favorite <laughs> chef because I'm like really diverse in terms of like who I watch in cooking and that usually changes with time actually, um, on the networks. But um inspiration I think my mom actually, not mm -hmm. the networks, in terms of how she cooks and the amount of time. Like there's no time you call her that she wouldn't want. Like if we were all around and on the dining table, she would always have a meal ready for us. Like it doesn't even, no matter how tired she is, she gets up and gets going in terms of everybody has to eat, right? So that's my major source of inspiration in terms of like cooking and keep cooking. But um, shows I like to watch. I, lo I love Gordon Ramsay because is is not only is he diverse in the way he cooks, but he's also very very blunt. He's very blunt. He's, if he doesn't like something, he's going to tell you directly. But but from watching him growing up, um, yeah, I, I, I think that's one chef I like. And you watch a lot of Master Chef too. Yes, the competition. Yeah, and the cooking competition so as well, getting things done quick. So it makes me kind of gives me inspiration to be faster in the kitchen, doing things faster. Maybe the traditional ways probably not the best way, and um, doing 
re re redefining what tradition is basically. That's great. I think we need to get you off the Um So then, one last question for you, and I think it might be a good little, little segue. Um, people are wondering what is jollofish usually served with? Is it, do you just eat it by itself, or are there other things that call it? Yes. Um, so, depending on the protein of choice, so as I said, you can, you can make it vegan, vegetarian. Vegetarian. <laughs> if there's a word as vegetarian, um, you can make it whatever you want. But in terms of um, accompaniments, the dish we usually serve it with fried plantains. Uh, we call it locally. Uh, your boss call it dodo. Um, uh, you can serve it with a salad. You can also serve it with um, chicken, beef, grilled chicken, jerk chicken, yeah. fried chicken, yeah. <laughs> um, fish. fried fish, yeah. grilled fish. Um, whatever, whatever suits your palate at the moment. It's it's a it's a base for anything you want. Really, you can have it with grilled vegetables. Um, depending on what you actually want to eat it with, it's mm -hmm. just like a base to eating anything with. Really, so um, usually we serve it in parties with um, salads, um, fried yeah, plantains, um, beans pudding, which is which is locally called moi moi. So yeah. it's a, a beans puree with peppers, onions, um, uh, it's kind of similar to a falafel, but just in a pudding form versus, um, versus like the fried format. Yeah, and you can put in anything inside, but yeah, it usually goes with anything. It's a blank palette, not a blank palette, because it has lots of flavor, but it's a, 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 a plain palette for you to be able to put anything you want. Which I have a non-food. Question. Just, I'm interested in what's your favorite part about Nigerian culture that you would like to share? Um, how resilient Nigerians are. Um, I think that is my favorite part. Like anywhere we go to, we're able to adapt to the culture, and also um, we find we can we can kind of find our own path even in any situation. So regarding you know, the political situation, social construct. Regardless, wherever we find ourselves, that's the thing I like about Nigerian culture, and that spans across every ethnic groups because we're very diverse in ethnic groups in that sense. Um, but the resilience, I think, is one thing that always does it for me for Nigerians because you see Nigerians doing a lot of great things. Yeah, and I think also one thing I like about Nigerians is that regardless of the situation that we're in, we're proud of being Nigerian. Just like how Italians are like proud of being Italians, like we have that like, like we're very proud of our like of being Nigerian. <laughs> and other African countries probably don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Always have problems. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, for example, I have my flag. I when I was doing my masters, I left Nigeria to Europe, and I traveled to. I, I studied in four countries. I have my flag, <laughs> and anywhere I go, I just put it there. My class is like, "Chinas, are you always carrying your flag?" It's enough. I said, "No, it's not." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just love it like that. So do you have anything to say about that? <laughs> I mean, um, an evidence that we are very resilient. I've survived five months in Canada. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We are, we, are, we are proof of that, so... Yeah, yeah. and I just want to mention he's on this attire, it's a Nigerian attire. With the, I don't know whether you notice that. <laughs> yeah, so that shows how proud he is. <laughs> Thank you. Is it going? Yes, it's going now. We're just, I just said, no, we won't go. Um, just to bring the sauce and... How long does it usually take though? Um, so in terms of steaming the rice, I would give it like 20 minutes, 30 minutes to steam so that the rice absorbs the liquid. Because we're not cooking on high heat, we're cooking to low to medium heat, right? So it takes a little longer than when you're probably steaming rice, putting in. But as I said, labor of love. Throughout the whole process is a labor of love. It's not a quick dish, but you can always make the sauce earlier on um, just so that it's quicker and you can get your food in. Yeah. Under 30 minutes. <laughs> Have you tried other, because there are uh, other West African countries cook jello fries? Mm -hmm. So, like, which one is, do you think it's the best or something? I don't know. It's not like a competition, but which one do you think? <laughs> As a Nigerian and a proud Nigerian, <laughs> jello is the best. But in terms of like, other African countries, 
Um, Ghanaian jollof is actually not bad, even though there is a long debate between Ghanaian jollof and yeah, jollof. Yeah, always. There has been a battle. <laughs> 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 battle has the best jollof rice in the But Ghanaian jollof rice, depending on the thing about jollof rice, depends on the cook, right? Because yeah. everybody has their own recipe. That's so, true. As uh, a pizza restaurant will have the same pizza, the components and the cook tells the difference. Yeah, true. Right? So, um, with jollof rice is the same principle to us well, so. I think the diverse like, cook. It tastes like Togolese rice. Togolese people cook oh, fantastic. They're really, well. really good at cooking. And their Togolese jollof rice too is fantastic. I don't think they get a lot of rep in terms of jollof rice yeah. war, but they cook fantastically yeah. well yeah. as well in Togo too as well. So their jollof rice is also very good. Yeah. And so like, okay. like no matter how like when we went to Togo, which is a long time ago, no matter how local the spit uh, places mm. they actually plate all their dishes like fancy way which yeah. i thought that was that was very interesting because in nigeria we don't really spend a lot of time to plating our food yeah true but in togo like they're <laughs> they're big on plating even in local restaurants okay. and stuff so that was interesting okay, so okay. i have a question um i noticed your card says toronto but you're here right yes, yes. Yeah. so where would i go to pick up food <laughs> we're, we're in the city we're here in um, so we're around Stephanie and uh, what's the name of the section? And Imperial? Imperial, yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay. It's not far, it's like nine minutes. Yeah, one minute. Yeah, it's true, I guess. You're in the wrong boat in 25 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, we usually you order food like during the week and we make it um, on Saturdays. So, the majority of our customers come to our place, come and pick up their food on Saturday. So, we, we, we're not a sitting restaurant. Um, we'll just, we just cater for events or your private event at home. So, you can order ahead of time and get ready. Yeah. Come pick up all the food. Do you do small portions though? Like yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. I think you had a question. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I'm craving, I know we have our own. Curry powder. I don't know if you need well, their own curry powder. What is different about your curry powder, or is it from? Um, so um, so it depends. So there's no Nigerian curry powder. It's uh, the curry powder actually came from like when the Indians actually came to Nigeria. Now that we say it gets into you know where we live. Yes. 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 Okay. So we realized, wow, well, this tastes fantastically well with jollof rice. <laughs> so <laughs> then that became part of the recipe, great part of the recipe. But um. In terms of like the blend, it's kind of similar to probably like the Jamaican curry powder too as well. So um, you can make it at home too as well, or you can buy something in store. Which was so if you're going to buy a store bought one, it'd be the Caribbean one. Yeah, the Caribbean one. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. I, I don't really like. I will not mention brand names. But I, don't really, <laughs> I don't really like some of the local Canadian yeah. ones, but yeah, the Caribbean ones taste better. Or also the Indian curry as well taste better. Um, in terms of flavor. <laughs> 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 um, so, do you see a difference between how Canadians and Nigerians approach food? Is there, I guess, like, you that's a little bit different? Or? Um, Canadians, I think like, like, everybody wants the food quick. Mm-hmm. Right? Everybody wants the food quick. I think that's. I think it's not only Canadians and North American culture. That's so it's like the long process that food usually takes, right? Um, or in the natural state of it, Nigerian cooking, it takes time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like you can do like a mise en place. You can do prep work before, but it takes time. Mm-hmm. That's. I think that's the major difference in terms of quick versus um, quick versus the labor of love has been mentioned. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I have a similar question. Um, I'm from Argentina, and um, there a lot of people come are like Italian uh, background or Spanish, and so we're really big on eating with family, and all your meals are eaten with the family in like a um, big gathering you know, on Sunday. Sunday lunch is a big thing. Do you have something similar? Like, because here in Canada, like I noticed that. A lot of Canadians don't tend to eat together as much as other countries, like my own. Mm-hmm. Um, what is that like in Nigeria? 
similar to as well. We like we, there's some people called Sunday rice. So most families actually rice and stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it's that uh, like when you're back from uh, church, uh, church yeah. or or, or mosque or wherever you go to um, you worship. Um, usually we have that gathering where either your the mother or the father at home has cooked a dish and everybody like the table is set. Either you eat on the floor or you eat with your hands or you eat cutlery. There's that gathering that happens. Everybody comes on your rice because either it's white rice, jollof rice, fried rice, whatever rice it is, we all gather on Sundays and eat that rice together as a family. Yeah, so that kind of culture we kind of eat together as well. Yeah. And just to add to that, like we're like our culture is very community based. So if you live on the same street, like anybody can come to your house and do the weekend and just pop in and you have to have food ready for them. Yes. Like, <laughs> they, like, they're offended. <laughs> so like, people usually during the weekends they cook yeah. your pork because you have your, your, your neighbours come to visit you. So there's a very strong like community. Um, and also because we're different cultures, um, we have a lot of public holidays. Yeah. And we have a lot of events and weddings. Weddings such a big thing. So there's always like food events. So like like we always like do like every weekend people's going someone's going to a party. There's always a party. Like in, in where we where we're from, which is Lagos, like Lagos people are known for partying. Like they'll have a party like a wedding. Then the next week they'll have a party to celebrate how successful the wedding was. <laughs> <laughs> like that's like because okay. so we're always like in each other's spaces like yes, during the yes, weekends. Yes, yes. Yeah, and it's, it's that culture of gathering, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, because the, the the African adage where no man is an island, or uh, you take the village, right? So, Literally, yeah. so we we everything we do it as a village, right? Yeah. Your community, your your yeah. more come get and um, I think that's another shock. To answer that question again, that's another difference between Nigerian culture and Canadian culture, where everybody kind of works in silos here, and we 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 revert the importance of like the community yeah. helping each other out. Yeah. yeah. Just to add to that, like whenever we make food in the weekends. You always make food and like prepare for unexpected guests. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. you can't. I just have someone. <laughs> yes. Like, okay. so. I, like I remember <laughs> as a kid, my mom was like, "I'm not home." I'm like, yeah. My mom would tell me, "Go and tell that person outside, I'm not home." I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like my mom said she's not home. <laughs> <laughs> oh my so, goodness. I think we have a question. Um, you likely don't have leftovers after making these delicious. Um, but if you do, what ways do you prepare it the, the next day? Like, do you make croquettes the following day and fry them, or how do you choose leftovers of um, this dish? Usually, it's usually no leftovers. No <laughs> <laughs> but you know, definitely, you can just reheat it and eat it okay. the way it is. Um, if you wanted to spin it into something else, you can add vegetables into it. Yeah. Um, you can. Uh, I don't know about the croquettes because of the long grain rice, but you can try that. That would be a different recipe. <laughs> you can always, you, as I said, it's a blank palette for you to, you can stir up different dishes from it to so, so, suit your own palette. So if you wanted to make it into a croquette, I'm sure that will work perfectly well. I'm sure that will actually be delicious. I should try that out. Um, what do you think it's, is people's perception about Nigerian foods in, in Canada? Um, I think um, with with the pandemic, the pandemic did a lot for um, African food in general mm -hmm. in terms of the fufu craze. There was a fufu craze on TikTok, on TikTok yeah. which made people um, actually taste the dish, right? So the more the dish you, you bring the dish in front of people, the the more the culture. Like everybody's now interested. You know, I want to eat, taste their goosey. I want to taste fufu. Even though everything is not called fufu, fufu is just a plant. <laughs> Like, it's just a bland statement because there's pounded yam, there's poundu yam, there's amala, there's like there are different dishes, but at least now we have people actually trying that's the true. dishes, which is always when there's going to be a paradigm shift, that's also very critical. Whether it's a craze or actually people's interest, it drives up interest, and people realize, oh, I guess it tastes delicious, vegetable soup tastes delicious, and that's that's how the perception is changing gradually. Do we have some work to still do? Probably yes. I think I will be much more prouder when when um, uh, the like how the Asian cuisine is to a Canadian, mm -hmm. uh, an Afri African cuisine is like that to a Canadian to us. So where you can order midweek 
made with dish and you you are aware of what the dish is and the variety is. And one thing from my side is like being in Canada and tasting because I like to taste like different dishes. Like the more I eat different dishes, I'm like this is very similar to like Nigerian food, but obviously like you just have a little bit of different. People prepare it differently. So if the more you try out like African food, the more you be like, oh, it actually does taste like like Mexican food. Oh, it does taste like Italian food. Because we actually did a YouTube video um, of Mexicans trying like Nigerian food, and like every time you're like, oh, this tastes like something back home. This tastes like something yeah. back home. So we're kind of similar, but just in different ways. I think I think one thing to add to that one, one thing that I realized with when we did that Mexican Mexican try Nigerian food was um, they realized that the moi moi yeah. or the beans pudding tastes so much like tamales. Yeah. So which is probably the same thing because remember there's a history between Africans and all the, um, the Latin American and also the Caribbeans where there's a lot of migration that happened. I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> 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 But a lot of that brought our culture, right? Yeah. So people came with their culture, so that also left an indentation on the cuisine in those countries too, as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So the first time I tried Joel was, was because of the TikToks and everyone. Oh. Like, okay, let me try it. It's food food. Let's this. Let's try it. Um, what's your opinions on people getting obsessed with food food? Is that like a main dish you guys eat, or was that like why is everyone obsessed with this? Um, no, I, as I said earlier on, um, if it's a craze or a food fad, um, I would actually like people to try the dish. Like, the goal is to get people to actually try the dishes, right? Whether it's just a trend or anything like that, I don't have a problem, at least for my own personal opinion, I don't have a problem with it. Um, it helps the rest, local restaurant yeah. as, well, as well. So, you going in and purchasing from that restaurant keeps that restaurant open. So, um, please keep buying for food. <laughs> <laughs> trying it. Keep trying those dishes. Well, like, it's popular. Like, every tribe has their popular dish. So, like, I would say, like, where our parents are from, Undo, um, in Undo, like, they eat pound in the air, like, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, <laughs> so, certain tribes, like, certain things are more popular in other tribes. And interestingly, like, depending on where you live, you might not actually taste other people's food. So, even as a country, we're actually learning to, like, Learn other people's like dishes, like even who and some even who don't know how your rainbow dish tastes, right? So we're still learning, so we're growing as like TikTok and social media is also growing too. So. Yeah, that's very true yeah. because for us we have different dishes and they all have different dishes. It's just jollof rice is one of the common yeah. dishes that we cook together. Yeah. Even the fufu, like you mentioned pando. Yeah. I don't really know how to make that, yeah. but I can pound uh, the yam yeah. itself and also make fufu. So and we eat it with different soups. Yeah. A, a melon soup, bitter leaf soup. Yeah. Bitter leaf soup is very bitter. And for me, I don't know why I enjoy it so much <laughs> because it's from my own tribe, yeah. right? Yeah. So there, are, I think I don't know how to cook afa. Uh, we call um, it afaru, which is like spinach, Afer, exactly. spinach soup. So all those, uh, we are still learning how to uh, cook each other's. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So thank you very much because. We are going to wrap up now. Uh, it was really a nice Sorry. event. Yeah, I'm just going to bring up oh, okay. Okay. the final dish. How it should oh, yeah. be. <laughs> okay, just to continue as the... <laughs> so this is how it's usually served. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, so what's that? So this is grilled chicken. Oh. This is coleslaw. Okay. And this is the jollof rice. Oh, perfect. So it looks good. I think you did it well. I enjoyed it. I learned how to make jollof rice with patience, with love. I didn't know you have to use the yeah, express love while making jollof rice, but I saw how kind of the express love. Like, love is a new yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to try jollof rice maybe by next week or so to see whether I can make something like this. Thank you very much again. And thank you, our special thank guests. You. Thank you so thank much you. for uh, being here with us and granting our work. Okay. Um, as we wrap up, we'd like to thank our in-person guests and those that joined us online. Thank you very much for joining Deep Dish Dialogue today. And just so you know, Deep Dish Dialogue is a monthly event that is 
organized by the School of um, Hospitality, Food, Tourism and Management, as well as the IL Food Institute. We are scholars of IL Food Institute and the University of Guelph. So our next event is taking place on the 23rd of March and we'll have Chef Jaga Gordon and Professor Bruce McAdams who will be discussing food waste and food security. So we look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.